Hi guys, my name is Jacqueline and welcome to my YouTube channel or welcome back to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time, please subscribe. And if you're a normal subscriber, please hit that bell notification to let you know whenever I upload next. And I want to do a quick shout out to a channel I, channel I actually really do enjoy that I think you guys should definitely take a look at. Um, her name is Ashley, but on YouTube it is Dead Girl Superstar. I'm sorry, I'm looking at my TV to make sure that I'm saying it properly. I will also hopefully remember to leave it in the description box, but if I don't, somebody comment it, please. <laughs> um, I just, I really think she is great. Um, she has survived um, thyroid cancer. She has obviously, um, not obviously, why did I say obviously? She has had an addiction to opioids that she has kicked, and I'm so proud of her for that. Um, she is very open on her channel, and she is very, very... She's just overall a great person, I think. Um, I've met her a couple of times, and she was always super, super nice. And uh, actually, if you're watching this, we need to get together one day, because I would love to bounce ideas off you, and hopefully we can inspire each other, because as you all may know now, we are local YouTubers. And I don't believe that there is a lot in my area, but if there is, comment your channel and let me know so I can subscribe and, you know, we can all help each other out because YouTube is about bringing people closer. And with all the recent drama, that's not really possible, but if we make it possible, obviously it can be. So please do me a favor, please go subscribe to her, leave her some lovely comments, don't be an asshole about it, you know. Sorry for my cussing, but there are some people that, you know, have commented really, really just evil, maniacal stuff on her channel, and that's not okay. Um, also, if, uh, if you guys could just let her know that you came from here, that would be great. And today, I thought I would do, um, not really a story time, but more tell you guys dates I went on that went south. Um, some of them are, like, kind of just, like, PG, like, it just didn't work. And others are a little more scandalous. So keep in, just keep watching. So uh, my first story is gonna be, um, I, what, I started seeing this guy after me and my ex broke up like a year later. And um, I wasn't really feeling anything. Like he would take me out on dates and it was really nice. And like, you know, we would hang out and we would talk. It didn't really feel like, you know, it would, work more on a relationship term so I kind of didn't feel like you know I didn't feel like he was getting feelings either and that was good but oh was I wrong I remember he took me to a local diner and my boyfriend every time I tell the story or just say the line he dies laughing because he just thinks it's so freaking funny and I feel terrible because this person probably just remembers me as that 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 girl and so I remember he took me to the local diner in my town and we ate dinner and I just remember I was eating chicken like roasted chicken and it was so good like it was probably the best chicken I've ever had and it's so ridiculous to say that but it's true um so I just remember him looking across the table at me and like hold <laughs> grabbed my hand and said and looked me in the eye as I'm like trying to eat and he says I think I'm falling in love with you. And I take my hand back slowly and I'm just like, I like this chicken. Like, what possessed me to do that, first off? Second off, I didn't want to tell him I think I love you too because A, that's just giving somebody false hope and that's just mean. And B, I didn't feel anything. Like, I felt like this was more of a friendship. We were just hanging out. He always paid for stuff, but I, I would always offer and he would be like, no, no, no. And, and he would never tell me it's a date. And then this happened and it was like, oh God, why? And so needless to say, I went on one more date with him and then I finally tried to end it. And I think we had a big fight and then I haven't talked to him since. Another one is something funny. I'll give you a little bit of a backstory. Um, when I went to college, obviously you do orientation. So I was in the gymnasium doing orientation um, and there was a guy on stage and he had a mic and he was talking and blah, 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 blah. And I just remember this guy in front of me 
was just like huffing and being like, you know, like snarky, you know, was just like, okay, this is getting like really annoying. So I'm trying to pay attention to this guy. Like, yeah, I don't want to be here either, but guess what? We have to be. Well, not have to, but it, it's more proper if you do show up for orientation so you know what's going on and where you are in the school. But anyways, um, so I just remember being like, excuse me, do you mind like quieting down so I can listen? Like, I, I was just that sassy because I, I wasn't having it that day. And he was just like, oh, oh, yeah, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And I'm like, it, it's fine, dude. Just let's pay attention. <laughs> and so I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, oh, please don't let him be in my class. Please don't let him be in my class. Yeah, he's in my class. So I'm like, great. So I decide, you know, the week starting of school, I decide, you know what, let's just hang out with them, try to, like, smooth things over, try to, like, be nice to one another, because we're gonna be in this for two years, and I just remember he asked me to go, to go for lunch, and I thought, oh, okay, we're going as friends, cool, so we go, and it's just me and him, which I thought was a little bit strange, because, you know, we have, like, ten people in our class that he could have invited, and mind you, I'm the only other girl in this class. Also, um, the same day orientation, I also had another guy hit on me and I was like, no, 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 you're not my type. <laughs> so, uh, neither was this guy. Uh, anyways, so I, obviously we went to lunch. I remember the check came and the whole time we were at lunch, he was talking about himself and I could barely get a word in, which is not okay in my books. Cause like, I like to talk to you. I like to tell you stuff about me. But anyway, so he would talk about himself and I was just like, okay, whatever, cool, let's listen. And I kept listening and he was telling me he hosts a radio show um, and it is public and I'm like, oh, cool, that's really cool. And like he would go on and on and on about his life and I'm like, okay, cool. And then I remember at one point he brought up that he wants to get married one day and have children. And I was like, that's a little like random to bring up like when you're just friends with somebody, but like, cool, like, yeah, that would be cool. And I just kind of agreed. And then, and especially because this is the first time I actually like full out hung out with him, I didn't really get to talk to him too much because obviously classes. And then I remember um, he asked me if he, if I wanted to walk with him to the stairwell, before he went to his next class and I was like sure he paid for the lunch and I saw that uh, I thought that was really cool because I was like oh wow you did not have to do that and he's like no 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 it's no problem and then we went you know I walked into the staircase and he's like you know I'd like to end this date like a normal date and I just hugged him <laughs> and walked away and I was just like <sighs> like I hugged him and I was like see you in class and I just like walked away and I was like oh <laughs> I stopped in the middle of the hallway and Oh no, it was a date. Like I had no idea. He just asked me randomly and I was like, sure, why not? I had no idea it was a date, first off. Second off, I'm like, oh, he wanted to kiss. Oh no, 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 no. So needless to say, the whole time I was in class with him for two years, he was hopelessly in love with me. And I am not joking, I wish I was. He would cause a lot of drama between me and one, one of my friends who is subscribed to me and it was just oh my god it was the worst like mind you there was good times and bad times but like he kind of made the college experience for me kind of really crappy and that wasn't cool just because he didn't get his way with me but anyway mind you like i'm glad that he didn't like force himself on me where you know it was more sexual but yeah so my last story is going to be kind of a sexual one. Not me having sex with a person, but it does involve his genitals. And you will understand why in a second. So I want to preference this. Um, please, if you ever are on a date and you feel uncomfortable in the first five minutes, get out. Like, because it is not going to turn around. If you already in your heart of hearts know that this is not okay, I don't like the feeling, I don't like the vibe, get out. And I should have done this with this guy, but I didn't because, well, I didn't know how. Especially when, um, always go out on a date too. If you're meeting somebody online, always go out in a public place. Always. Make sure it's very public. 
and make sure that if they're trying to make advances that you don't like, you let them know. And also you, you know, um, don't leave with them if you don't feel comfortable. Like, don't go anywhere with them. I was dumb and I was just like, okay, whatever. Um, so I remember I met this guy on Plenty of Fish and he, he asked to go out and I was like, sure, I can go for a date, whatever. So he picks me up from the college and we go to, um, a sushi place and so we eat and he was just overly sarcastic the whole time. Like there's a point where sarcasm is funny and then sarcasm is overused and it was just, it was that point where I just stopped giving a crap about the date. Like, I just didn't care anymore. And it's that's really bad when you become apathetic with the person. And that was probably my first clue that I probably should have called somebody to pick me up and I could have just went home. But no, I was too nice. And I just remember he took me to Marshall's and I went and grabbed a couple of things for a trip I had planned prior and that obviously didn't pan out, but that's fine. Um, and I just remember he was driving me home. And I remember him asking me a lot of like sexual questions and I just kind of like answered him like whatever. Like I didn't really care. And I remember at one point he literally whipped his penis out. I was looking out the window like minding my own business, trying to just, you know, hope that the car ride home is, gets a little bit quicker. And I just remember he whips it out and he was like, he put my hand on it without my consent or knowledge that this is going to happen. And he turns to me because I, I look like, what the f like, what are you doing? And he turns to me and says, you need to fix this. And I said, I don't need to do anything. And he says, you need to fix this because I bought you all that food and I've been driving you around. Blah, blah, blah. He drove me to one place. First off. Second off, if somebody does that to you, you do not owe them anything. That is your decision to make if you want to do it or not. So I turned to him and I said, I don't owe you anything. And he said, you do now. And I just got so triggered because I'm like, I'm not going to be manipulated into doing something because you bought me food. That's kind of you know, yeah, give me when you ask a girl on a date or, you know, if you're the one paying, it's kind of give me that it's either you can get something out of it or you probably won't the first time. And so I just, he was just such a jerk to me the whole time, kind of made me like, kind of put me down a lot and didn't apologize for any of it. And he just made me feel very uncomfortable. So I this I would not recommend especially when the person is driving but I just had enough and I did not care I dug my nails into it and I said pull the fucking car over sorry for the cussing but that's how it happened and I kept saying it over and over again and he was like kind of like not swerving but he was like a little bit and he was like obviously in pain <laughs> And I didn't feel sorry. I didn't feel sorry at all because it's like, first off, you're not forcing me to do anything because he literally w probably would have. Like he was trying to pull over when he first did it. So I'm like thinking in my head, I'm like, no, he's going to like force my head there or something. And I'm not okay with that. So I told him to pull over and he did. And I got everything out of the car as fast as I could. And I got out and I said, leave. And he like, he did exactly that. So I had to call somebody to pick me up and so I called somebody that I was seeing at the time like we weren't exclusive or anything but I did call him and he drove me home and that was probably the worst date I've ever been on and I want to preference this more as if you know you're already uncomfortable you need to just leave like figure out a way always have a plan with your parents or a friend or somebody that if a date goes south you have a way to get out of it or you know have the number for a taxi or an Uber in your car, in your car, in your phone, <laughs> or drive yourself there. You probably should drive yourself there because it makes it easier to be like, Hey, I'm done. Um, but obviously I do not drive. So I had no choice and well, I had a choice, but you know, I made my choice by standing up for myself and not allowing a guy to manipulate me 
or try to get something out, out of it when I didn't want to do that. So always remember you are in control of yourself, meaning if somebody is doing something you do not like, you do not have to stand for it or you do not have to be around it anymore. You can cut it out. And I want you guys to know that you have the power to, you know, dictate what is right for you and what is wrong for you. And always keep that in mind. And if somebody ever mistreats you or makes you feel uncomfortable or, you know, does things that you don't like, say something. Because if you do not say something, they'll just continue to keep doing it. It's just going to be an ongoing thing. And I want you guys to know that each and every one of you are a human being. You are not allowed... You're, it's not okay for you to ever feel uncomfortable and it's not okay for you to ever feel like you can't say anything because you can. You have a voice. You have to use it. And that's part of life. And I'm, I'm actually really happy that I did what I did because I don't know what would have happened. And I think I did it obviously out of fear, but I definitely don't regret it one bit. And I remember he texted me a couple days later asking if I had any single friends. I would never, ever, ever for a second set up any of my single friends with a person like that. Not once would I ever consider, oh, maybe this person. No, I wouldn't. And yeah, so um, please subscribe if you have not already. Comment down below. <laughs> Let's start a discussion. What's the worst date you've ever been on? Because I would love to hear it. I always read the comments and comment down below if you have any suggestions of what you want me to do next. And in case nobody has told you today, you matter. Bye guys.